Now let's head to the Indo-Pacific. A major reset could be on the cards there, one between China and Australia. Australia's Prime Minister Antony Albanese is heading to Beijing. He'll be arriving on Saturday. It's the first visit to China by an Australian Prime Minister in seven years. The last one was in 2016. It's also a state visit, so expect some pomp and pageantry. But beyond that, what's at stake here? Why is Albanese going to China and that two days after meeting US President Joe Biden? To understand that, let's look at recent history. Australia's previous government was anti-China. And I mean visibly anti-China. In 2018, they banned Huawei from the 5G network. In 2020, they wanted to investigate China over the Wuhan virus. Canberra demanded a global investigation. They also criticized China's actions in Hong Kong and Xinjiang. Now, all of this was valid. China was guilty in most of these cases. Just one problem, though. China also had a lot of leverage. I'm talking about bilateral trade. The China-Australia trade is worth around $300 billion. That's around 30% of Canberra's total trade. Meaning, one-third of Australia's overall trade is with China, and that gives Beijing an edge. They slab tariffs on Australian exports. We're talking about key industries here, like wine, beef, and coal. So Australia's exports dipped by $19 billion. Then came Anthony Albanese in the year 2022, a new prime minister. He wasn't exactly pro-China, but he was expected to fix the relationship, sort of steady the ship. And that's his mission in Beijing. The Prime Minister alluded to this last week. The relationship with, uh, with China is one where the principle that I bring to it is to cooperate where we can, disagree where we must, but engage in our national interest. It is in Australia's interests as well as China, but I believe in the global interest for us to have uh, a relationship where there is dialogue. And is China game? Beijing says strong ties with Australia are key to regional peace. Listen in. A healthy and stable China-Australia relationship is in the fundamental interests of the two countries and people and is also conducive to regional and world peace and stability. Albanese will be meeting President Xi Jinping. He will also attend a trade expo in Shanghai. Tells you where his mind is. He knows a political relationship with China is unlikely, almost impossible. So he's looking at the next best thing, a solid economic relationship. And China seems game. They've given some concessions in the last few months. Beijing promised to free a Chinese-Australian journalist. Her name is Cheng Lei. She's been in a Chinese jail for three years. Albanese was under a lot of pressure to get her released. Then last month, Beijing agreed. They also promised to review the tariffs, especially on wine. You see, Australia's wine exports to China were worth $1.2 billion. But the tariffs crippled them. The exports came down to just $7 million. Imagine that, from $1.2 billion to $7 million. Canberra threatened to drag China to the World Trade Organization. But now they've made a U-turn. So no case against China. I know it sounds like both sides are poised for takeoff. But it's not all rosy. China and Australia are strategic rivals. Beijing has been making inroads in the Pacific region, even signed a security pact with the Solomon Islands. And Canberra will not like that. The Pacific has been their strategic backyard. It was always the US-Australia show. Albanese says he will raise all such issues. Navigation in the Indo-Pacific, tensions in the Taiwan Strait, human rights, all of it. But Xi Jinping does not respond well to appeals for, or lectures. So Australia's real plan is this, to expand military capabilities. This year, Canberra published a new defense review. Look at what it said, and I'm quoting, China's military buildup is occurring without transparency or reassurance to the Indo-Pacific region of China's strategic intent. So basically, Canberra is changing strategy. They're switching from defense to offense. First was the AUKUS agreement. Australia, the US and the UK decided to build nuclear submarines. Not nuclear armed, these were nuclear powered. The second is long range missiles. 
Australia has signed an $800 million deal with the U.S. They will buy 200 Tomahawk missiles. And what is their range? More than 1,000 kilometers. If fitted on their warships, these missiles can strike China. So the ties are very precarious. China and Australia are strategic and military rivals, but their economies are closely linked. And I could say the same about most of Asia. India and China, Japan and China, ASEAN and China, South Korea and China. All of them have the same equation. And China has been betting on this to use their economic clout to keep rivals at bay. The question is, will it work? Washington is working hard to make sure it doesn't. They've been trying to take away China's leverage to offer alternatives to China, whether it's supply chains or raw materials or market access. But so far, the impact has been limited. So Joe Biden will be watching this visit closely. He must have received a brief from Albanese himself. The Australian Prime Minister visited the US last week. That too was a state visit. In fact, Albanese announced his China trip hours before heading to Washington. It tells you how tough the balance is. Biden was asked about this last week, about whether China and Australia can do business. Listen to his response. Trust but verify is the phrase. And uh, look, uh, China is having their own internal and external difficulties right now. China's economic growth is stagnant compared to what it was. China has engaged in activities that Russia and many other activities have, that others have engaged in in terms of intimidation and dealing with other countries. Trust but verify. That's the message from Joe Biden. India too will be watching this visit closely. New Delhi has excellent ties with Australia. Both are members of the Quad. So Albanese's words and actions in Beijing will be keenly watched. It's the dream of every cricketer. The ultimate glory. Few manage to keep their date with destiny. But for many, it's been heartbreaks and a cross to bear. The Holy Grail is here in India. I'm Rupa Ramani and First Post brings you the ringside view. We bring you the Cup of Dreams. Cricket World Cup coverage like never before.